The shipment of fabric swatches for Neil's blazer came in the mail today. As I stand there holding fabric swatches in my hand, wondering what I should pick for Neil's blazer, I realize I don't have any way of contacting him. So far, I've only run into him by chance, or he came over to my place himself. This time, we didn't set another appointment, so I can't really show him the swatches. What a pain. Now I have to actually go out and find him. I'm pretty sure he'd raise a huge stink over selecting a fabric without consulting him. How annoying. I guess I should start looking at the hospital, ask around for him, see if he's there. Maybe I'll get lucky. With that in mind, I grab the swatches, place the closed sign at my door, and lock up the shop. There it is. Clayner Medical Center. The one Neil seems to work at. The interest seems a little daunting, considering it really had... I really have no business at the hospital. Still, I do need to find the man before he continues to stalk my store windows again. I gather my courage and step inside the hospital. It's the first time I've been here, and I'm greeted by a white lobby with very tall ceilings. The hospital seems fairly calm. Only a few people seem to be going in and leaving. No sign of a certain man with purple hair. I wonder what position Neil has at the hospital. Surely he can't be a doctor. I refuse to believe someone as petty and mean as him could ever be allowed to be a doctor. Awkwardly, I make my way over to the receptionist who's in the middle of helping someone else, so I patiently wait in line. When, I, when it's my turn, the receptionist beckons me over. How may I help you today? Yes, um, I'm looking for Neil Forrester. Is he here by any chance? Maybe you don't even- uh, Maybe they won't even tell me if he's here or not, or perhaps not even be allowed to, but it's worth a shot. Mr. Forrester is currently present, but he's busy, ah, busy in a meeting. Would you like for me to leave a message behind? Hearing him be referred as Mr. Forrester kind of creeps me out. It doesn't suit him. Majesty is what his name is, thank you. Hmm, yes. Could you tell him J Soul? And that's when I notice it, Neil's voice. I turn my head to see a group of businessmen walking out the elevator among them is Neil. Actually, never mind, I say, removing myself away from the counter. I find myself quickly taking a seat near the windows so that I can inconspicuously, inconspicuously look at Neil who's decided to wait in the lobby with other men and argue about something seemingly important. I'm not sure what they're talking about. I can't understand what they're saying from here. He looks more dressed up than normal. His hair seems to be tidier. Oh, is this going to be where his hair is pulled back and it looks hideous? It almost looks like he's a he's a competent adult who doesn't have this nasty habit of running his foul mouth all the time. I'm intrigued and grossed out at the same time. The men continue to discuss among themselves until one by one they start to leave with their briefcases in hand. The last one shakes Neil's hand and leaves as well. There's a really smug smile on Neil's face, and he fixes his tie. I roll my eyes. He's probably so full of himself for closing some kind of big deal right now. Maybe I should leave now before he notices me and starts to brag about it. So I stand up from the chair ready to escape. Oh? Jay? I cringe too late. I can't sneak off anymore. Well, I came here for a reason, so I guess I might as well get it over with. Neil. I put on a fake smile and approach him. Yeah. Burn this picture. This is not a good look on him. Neil runs a hand. Oh, I can't breathe, by the way. <laughs> Neil runs a hand through his styled hair. He looks less smug now. In fact, he's a bit sheepish. Caught off by guard- Ah, caught off guard, perhaps? Or perhaps he's remembering our last encounter, where I fell on top of him. Took control of him. That event still leaves me feeling a little awkward. <laughs> Do you like to spy on my meetings? That implies you were actually saying something worthwhile that you needed spying on, I retort. Neil waves his hand at me, dismissing what he said. <laughs> Or perhaps you were captivated by my magnificent negotiating techniques and couldn't help but stop and stare in awe 
says Neil cheerfully, nodding at himself like this was the actual truth. Okay, I guess the awkward Neil from before has disappeared entirely because he went back to the arrogant one. What does he want? A cookie? You're gross. I take it you closed some kind of important business deal? I say in a dull voice. Yup, Neil is definitely not the mature adult I thought he was only mo mm. minutes ago. Neil looks at me with a knowing smirk, but doesn't reply. That actually kind of gets on my nerves. He won't even tell me what he's so gleeful about. It's just so annoying. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm here for your blazer. Didn't have any way of contacting you, so I came here. Neil stretches out his hand, palm side up. Oh. Hand over your phone, he commands. I frown at him. Excuse me? He beckons at me with his hand, waiting for me to give him my phone. Hmm. Hmm. See, that's just nice to him. Well, that was I nice to him. If someone asks for my phone, why give him my phone? I don't get give him my phone. He's been a douchebag. <laughs> I'm not giving you my phone. I say I him suspiciously. He sighs. Do you want to be able to contact me? No, no, I don't. But I kind of have to, so I not. Yes. <laughs> then add me to your contacts. I pull out my phone from my purse, and Neil immediately smiles. <laughs> well, that's an ancient fossil I haven't seen in a while. He's referring to my flip cell phone. I hold it close to my chest and glare at him. Some of us don't get free stuff from our parents, I say back. Neil returns my glare, then starts to recite his phone number, which I quickly noted down. I save the number under the contact, His Majesty, with a smirk. <laughs> now you won't have to come and spy on me at work, he said arrogantly. Like I wanted to spy on him. Look, I only wanted your opinion on these fabric swatches. I got them with me, so hurry up and decide which one you want so I can finish your garment. I open my bag and show him the small sample of swatches I have with me. It's mostly just a lot of different variations of gray. Neil takes it and studies each sample with a pensive look. Now that he's all concentrated and stopped running, off, and stopped running off his mouth, he actually looks really mature again. I wonder how old Neil is. He seems to be in his mid twenties, I think. Although when he's in the group and looking serious, he looks like he's thirty. It's the hair. Put it back. I feel myself staring, starting to be more impressed by his looks, not having seen this seen him this mature before. After a while, Neil notices that I've been staring at him, and he looks up from the swatches. Quickly, I avert my eyes, a bit embarrassed he caught hmm. me staring. Is this all you have? He said with an annoyed huff. All of the most expensive dark gray fabrics available in to me, yes. Perhaps expensive is only relative to you. These don't feel all that expensive to me. I frown at him. Must he always criticize everything? Well, if it's not to your taste, then I try to grab the swatches back from him. Neil pulls it out of my reach with a little shake of his head, and then pulls out some of the samples of a shady dark gray with thick texture and holds it up in front of my face but this one will do surprised that he's actually agreeing on one of the samples leaves me a bit stumped for words uh i mutter great now i can finish the blazer uh, finish the blazer whatever neil places a hand on his hip and hands me back over the swatches anything else you need he asks yeah how old are you i'm trying to date want to bang got yeah, tender it's kind of <laughs> it kind of flies right out of my mouth and even neil looks surprised at my question i butt my lips hard and suddenly feel all flustered for voicing my thoughts i didn't really want to say this out hmm. loud neil composes himself and simply gives a small huff regardless of whether or not this information is relevant to the creation of a certain garment i have to ask is your memory broken he is one year older than me like that I remember. I pay attention. I simply blink at him, wondering what he's going on about my memory. Seeing my confused face, he sighs. You really don't remember? Uh. Oh. 
You asked me before when we were kids. He asked in a soft voice. All right, memory. Suddenly I remember back when we were kids. I had asked him for his age and he said eight, which was a year older than me. That means present day Neil must be 24 years old. I looked down with my hands in my lap, red faced. Oh, this is all I can say? No, I guess I forgot until now. I'm surprised I still remember that. It's gonna be really weird when I do that one guy who's like severely younger than me, like six years younger. That's gonna be a little awkward. <laughs> I think it was like six. No, was it four? Yeah, four years younger. Okay. I. Cause then it's like little brother we're gonna be having some little brother like action that's gonna be weird okay on to neil let's finish this chapter i look down with my hands on my red lip uh red face oh is that all you can say no i guess i forgot until now i'm surprised you still remember them i don't forget things that are important to me neil fixes his tie my eyes widen in surprise. Is he saying the memories he has of me are important? Am I important? Oh. That means I won't forget ab about my watch. Ugh. Oh, of course it was about the watch. Is that everything you came to see me for? I'm quite busy. Yes, don't let me keep you from going to meetings or whatever he does at the hospital. Oh. Have a nice day, Jay. Same. For once? An actual civilized conversation has taken place between us. I am almost bothered by it. I finally head home. Back at the store, I rack my brain trying to think of what I need to do still to get this blazer finished. It shouldn't take long now. I think I can get it fitted by the end of the week. So I decided to text Neil. Are you free on Saturday this week? It doesn't take long before I get an answer back. Ugh, oh, so loud. I have plans, but I could squeeze you in. Will you have finished the garment by then? It should be ready by then, so please reserve an hour from your time that day. Mm. Speaking of reservations, are you going to be busy next month? Hmm? I wonder why Neil would ask me this, because he's scheming- or maybe he's scheming something. It's Oct- it will be October next month. I don't have any plans yet. After that, Neil stops texting me, and I left to wonder what he meant with that question. Ah, uh, well, it's just Neil. Time to work on this blazer and get rid of him. Or will I? Alright, are we on chapter 10 yet? Okay, so I said I'll do chapter 10, and chapter 10 will be the last chapter. <laughs> The blazer is all but done now after pulling a few all-nighters this week. I've been texting back and forth with Neil. He's as insufferable in text as he is in person, and we decided on a date where he can come fit the blazer. I guess the most fun part out of this whole arrangement was when I woke up with a text of mine asking- what? Woke him up with a text of mine asking him to remeasure his arm length at 2 a.m. in the morning. He belittled me as expected, but actually gave me the measurements. Haha, <laughs> the sucker. I didn't really need those measurements. I just wanted to wake him up at an ungodly hour so that he could suffer with me, considering I've been staying up this late for a few days in a row. Misery loves company, after all. So here I am, anxiously waiting for Neil to drop by after working hours. Finally, I get to be done with this guy. The bell rings and the door opens. Neil walks in looking quite posh and self-assured. There's always this overconfident aura around him. But then there's the whole thing about him asking if we're free next month. So we're not going to be done with this guy. Oh. Good evening, he greets me. I nod my head at him. Come with me to the back. I lead him to the sewing room so that I can fit and make any small adjustments to the blazer. Neil follows me quietly but I can feel his eyes burn a hole in my back. It's uncomfortable. Speaking of uncomfortable, I wonder if he'll react the same way again like last time, 
whenever I touched him, jerking away from me as if I'm something disgusting. I mentally shake my head. He's a weird one, but after today, it should be all over. I quickly, I quickly grab the blazer that's prepped and hanging on the wall, then hand it over to Neil. In a deliberately slow move, Neil takes it over and inspects it with a hawk eye. He slides the fabric through his fingers, looks at the lining and the craftsmanship. I start to feel pretty nervous about it all. To be honest, I'm preparing myself for his harsh words and criticism, because I know just exactly what he'll say. However, Neil doesn't say a word, and he slides his arms into his sleeve and put the blazer on. He turns to face the mirror and check himself out twisting his body from side to side to examine every angle. So doesn't it look nice? He looks quite dapper in the blazer. It suits him, but I can already see a few alterations I need to make. It's a bit too wide at the waist. I know it's Neil and all, and I shouldn't slave away for a guy like him, but it's against my principles to create a sloppy garment. So, I ask him impatient for his reaction. Neil sighs and closes his eyes for a bit. Mm. It's not anything remarkable, and it's a bit too wide at my waist. My cheeks are already glowing pink, pink, and I can't help but glare at him, even though he's right about the last part. What a thankless man. Mm. But it's passable. Decent enough to wear. Says a few small adjustments, and people might actually compliment me for wearing it. I blinked at Neil. Was that a compliment? I stared at him in shock at a loss of words. Neil notices me staring at him and gives me an indignant huff. Hmm. Well, are you going to continue to stand there and stare at me at all, or are you going to fix your mistake? He sneers at me. He quickly takes the blazer off and hands it over to me. Quit your whining. I'm doing this for free. I snap at him. I take the blazer and hop over towards my sewing machine and start to narrow the waistline. It should be a quick adjustment, so it doesn't take long before I'm finished. The sound of a sewing machine's needle plucking down fills the room, and Neil is tapping his foot on the ground impatiently. Once I'm finished, I hand it over to him, and he tries it on once more. Neil looks at himself in the mirror and fits, and the fit is a lot nicer. Mm. Ah, better! Now, alright, this seems adequate enough, he says. A sigh in relief, I am finished. Neil awkwardly fiddles around with the cuffs of the blazer as if he doesn't know what to say at the moment when he finally does speak up. Someone might actually want to try to find out who the tailor is. At least his quality shouldn't put me to shame. I look at him weirdly. Is this another compliment? I can't tell for sure. It's so awkwardly worded. Are you worried about what people might think about you? I ask. Neil raises an eyebrow at me in the mirror. And shakes his head. I don't waste my time worrying about inconsequential things like that. Your actions say otherwise, though. I say softly with the roll of my eyes. And Neil definitely cares about what people think of him. Just look at how much he cares what a blazer should look like. Neil turns around to face uh. me. No one has the time to be worrying about what the world thinks of them. They only really care about what a select few people have to say. Neil says in a low and serious voice. I'm a bit taken aback by the response, as it sounds mature and well thought out. I hadn't expected that to come out of the mouth of Neil of all people. It actually makes me curious if he had someone in mind that or someone in mind when he said that. So I look at him with a curious with curious eyes. I wonder who those people are. Does Neil even have anyone he cares about? Does that mean you have a select few people whose opinion of you matters? Neil's cheeks flush a little bit with pink, but he turns his back on me to continue inspecting himself in the mirror. He doesn't say anything. As Neil is still checking himself out in the mirror, he speaks um. up. You know, I'll be at a party next month. People will be wearing the most beautiful costumes from around the world. I'm sure even some like someone like you could learn something from seeing them. Would you like to go to a party with me? I know I was a douchebag this entire time, but like I could use a date because I have nobody and I'm rich. I bite on my lip and frown at him for changing the subject. What is he getting at here? And why are you telling hmm. me? I figured you'd be interested in a masquerade ball. What 
with you playing dress up all the time. Neil shrugs nonchalantly as he finally steps away from the mirror. I- Oh, that's because he was spying on me, right? Yeah. Drew comes out. I make clothes. I don't play. I start to wear silly insulted. He hand waves what I said. Same thing. And then he leans down with his elbow into my crafting table. <laughs> Are you interested? Interested in what? I roll my eyes. You don't have to act coy. I know even someone like you would love to be invited to a ball. No, how, no matter how low of a status they have. My nostrils flare up in anger. Listen here, Neil. Under no circumstances am I interested. So, I've got an invitation right here. He completely talks over me and takes something out of his back pocket. It's a cream-colored envelope. He shifts it between his fingers, looking smug and full of himself like hmm. always. Even you would be grateful to be invited to such a high-profile event. You could create your own costume and show off your work, Neil smiles oh. himself. Yeah, he's gonna try to get me as a promotional. I'll be doing you a favor. You should be thanking me for even thinking about inviting you. Uh, wait, have, uh, giving you something invitation. How dare you talk about me like that? I take the envelope out of his hand and slam it on the counter. Who says I even want to attend? Don't just go ahead and make decisions for me. Neil looks taken aback, but then he shakes his head a little. And his arrogant face is back to normal. <laughs> There's a lot of people, celebrities even, who show off their various designer costumes. I think it would be wise to accept this invitation if you want to make a name for yourself as a tailor there. It's an opportunity for you to create some connections. He's got a point. If it's anything like he describes, people would be flaunting their costumes. And perhaps I could make a name for myself and smash some celebrity as a client. But I don't really want to admit this to Neil. My pride won't allow it. I thought I was going to stop seeing Neil around any longer, but now he's waving this invitation around in my face. That could definitely be good for my business. I really don't know what to do. And what do you want in return? I finally ask. There's gotta be a catch. No way would Neil offer this to me for free. There's a sly smile on Neil's lips. <laughs> I might give it to you if you beg, he says gleefully. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna beg for it. Uh. But I also don't want my character to feel like, I have nothing to say. I feel so small and weak. He has so much power over me. Uh. No, I'm not gonna buy. Hmm. Oh, why is he getting all sad? I guess I overstayed my welcome here. Thank you for this blazer. It's not much, definitely not worth the price in return for my watch. But it will do under your evening, Jane. I'm so sad. Did I ruin it? I do want to see the ending with him, but I just don't want to be- What? No! Ugh. Okay, finally I thought I was sort of kneel, but then he dangles his shiny pride in front of me, asking me to beg for it. No way. I've still got my pride. Neil can go ahead and visit that ball by himself. I'm not attending. I start to clean up my workplace, and a little while later my phone buzzes. I stop working and look at the phone. I got a text from his majesty. <laughs> Check your mail. Curious what he means, I quickly check out my email and there's nothing new. I'm confused so I write back. He just slipped the invitation in my mailbox? <laughs> I, I also feel like he's being so arrogant because when I was younger in this game, it I told him, oh, you're older than me, so you should be more... What, courageous or something? And so now he's just like, aha. So basically, I created this monster. <laughs> he can't 
be this daft to not realize I'm at your actual mailbox outside of your store. My cheeks flush in embarrassment. Quickly, I go to the front of my store and check out the mailbox. I'm not gonna lie, I was getting kind of sad there. I could feel my heart skip a beat as I open the mailbox. There's a cream envelope inside, it's an invitation. I quickly open it and read it, unable to contain my curiosity. You were invited to the annual Forester's Masquerade Ball. Wear a mask so no one can tell your true identity. Hide it well. From 8 o'clock till midnight on October 10th. There is an address to the venue on the back. I'm frowning at the invitation. Neil wanted to give it to me no matter what I said. And I wonder why. Why does he want me at the party? I can't imagine it's because he thinks we're friends or anything even remotely close to friendly with each other, but then why? Why invite me? Is it because he wants to show off his own costume? I'm pretty sure he's got his own tailor that's making a costume for him. Perhaps you want to rub it in my face that is that his is so much better than mine. Well, just you wait, Neil. I'll make a costume that'll dazzle you. making me feel a little bit that that actually kind of hit my emotions there just a little bit oh well this was um, a fun time it took me three hours to get to chapter 10 and um it's it's very interesting so far so i'm definitely gonna have to go ahead and play more of this later um it's been a really cool time 